Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. And Gray Block, if you like different styles of pizza, you can do it. They got plain onion, garlic, poppy. They got different sauces, basil pesto, olive pesto, pink alfredo. And they got all type of special toppings. Barbecued marinated chicken, parmesan mozzarella, gorgonzola, goat, gouda, feta. They got all the cheeses, all the good stuff, ground beef. Black Forest Ham, ooh, mysterious, but still ham. They got button mushrooms, pineapple leeks, cilantro, garlic, and countless other items, sauces, and styles. Gray Block Pizza in Santa Monica. Check them out online, grayblockpizza.com. 1811 Pico Boulevard on the way to the beach. Gray Block, get that hitter. Amen, baby. Amen, and be men too. A lot of second level dudes out there, a lot of B men as well. You know that. You know who you are. Remember Ladies Night? Remember that Ladies Night? It's Ladies Night. That was always, I felt like, the biggest crock of shit, you know? Like, dude, it's Ladies Night. I would always have a friend, and not even a friend, sometimes just an enemy that, or just a buddy, someone I knew that drank and could walk to a, to a bar. And be like, bruh, it's ladies night. It's ladies night over there. It's ladies night, dude. Down at the smoking Onion, bro. You in or you out? And like, dude, come on, man. We ain't getting no ladies, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> we ain't getting no ladies, buddy. Dude, we need, we, every time we go out, we get zero ladies. You think tonight that the that the, the oper, that you think tonight uh, something's gonna be different? That the uh that the that the cooter fairy is just going to come and hit us with that cooter wand or something? No. You can't. You got to recognize that, you know, it's late. Come on, bro. It's ladies night. Man, come on. Dude, you know good and well if you and me are in it, man. It ain't damn a ladies night, bro. It's going to be you and me are going to get there. We're going to pay that cover. To, and they always put like a lady by the door so it looks like there's ladies. And they make you wait in the line. You get in there and they got one lady there. It's just a coat lady. She's taking people's coats. And we live in Louisiana. You don't, Nobody has a damn coat. So that's really waste of fixed costs right there. That I mean, that lady's just doing nothing. Sometimes you'll see somebody has a tank top, uh, you know. If somebody wore a double tank in there and they shed one and give it to the girl, keep her employed, you know, keep a little Tiffany employed or a little Daphne or whatever, you know, named after somebody who doesn't know how to pronounce flowers, you know, Daphne Dills. But man, I, it's ladies, come on, dude, it ain't, bro, when we go, we've been going places for years, man. And need, we ain't got no ladies, bro. We ain't got no ladies, man. Dude, the last ladies night we went to, I had to hold your waist while you vomited. Because the upheaval was too much for your body to handle because you don't have a strong spine, man. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So, I'm just trying to be honest, man. I'm just trying to be honest and... Just do whatever I can or also do whatever I can't. You know that. Um, all right, let's kick this bad animal right in the freaking ball bag. You got it? Tie up your, uh, tie your own tubes, you know? Dude, I used to know this tough girl. Real, real tough. Kind of girl, man, uh, you know, she, um, she chose not to pass gas sometimes because she liked to keep that pressure in her body. That kind of girl. Like, that's a real kind of girl just snatch a damn goat off a bridge, just walk out. You feel me? The kind of girl who would walk out on a windy day and just take her damn breasts out 
and just look Mother Nature right in the eyes and say, bring it on, bitch. You know, tough girl. And, um, oh shit, I don't know what I was going to tell you guys. But, uh, let's get into this episode, man. I, what did I say? I used to know a tough girl, bro. It's ladies. Come on. Boy, it ain't. When you and me go, dog, it ain't never ladies night, man. Dude, it ain't never. La- Dude, you got beat up. Remember one time we were walking to a place. Me and my buddy, and he got beat up by the dude with the, uh, we went going to a happy hour. He got beat up with a, by a brother with one of those tax guy signs. You know, he got beat up by a black statue of liberty with a tax guy sign. So, it ain't never ladies night, man. Come on, let's go. All right, let's get into it. ladies tonight hello and thank you uh for joining me and joining yourself here and this is it baby this is it this is that cupcake that life made us and i'll tell you be honest with you right now there ain't much frosting on that sugar piece right now there ain't much frosting there ain't much frosting on the dessert right now is there it's cake only, baby. And it's a lot of bootleg cake. A lot of bootleg cake we're digesting right now. You know, you, uh, you know, I went for a jog. Here's one thing that's just really boiling, boiling my beef. And I mean, when I mean boiling my beef is when I'm going for a jog. And a jog, you know, it's, you know, you want to run, but you, you can't run because you're not that fast. So you jog. It's basically what white people started doing because we, you know, we wanted to, do, when, when black people started running, we were like, oh shit, we're not running. We're kind of jogging. So let's rename it. And so that's how that really shook down to be factual or historical. Um, you know, because black people were fast, man. I mean, they had, what was it? They used to, they used to have the, um, the Runderground Railroad, bro. If you went on that, that's where Carl Lewis came from. The Runderground Railroad, dog, you just go down there. You'd have a white dude had to get in a train just to even keep up with the black guys on that thing. So there's a lot of speed coming out of the black community in the 1800s, early 1900s. Um... But, oh, here, what I'm noticing is I'll go for a jog, right? I'll go for a, or what I call a white run. And I'll go for that really, you know, I'll go for a white run and 
I'm passing other joggers, you know, um, constituents, you know, foot constituents. And they don't wave. And that just bees my bee, okay? Boils my beef, buddy. If I'm running and you are also running and we pass by each other, and you don't want You don't wave? We're in a pandemic. This could be the end of time. You know, this might have been when Mother Nature set her alarm. And you're not even, you just, you're, I'm out here doing my best. You're doing your best. You're not going to give me a hello, a peace, a thumb up. Give me a thumb up. Man, it gets me. Because especially if you're doing fitness, if you're out there, you know, I get out there, I'm doing full body fitness, I'm running, keeping my chest forward when I run, trying not to arch my back too much. You know, I don't want them gay dudes flexing. Because you, in, in, you know, this is Los Angeles, man. This is really, this is, um, you know, this is a hotbed really for homosexuality and adult gay. So you, if you're running... With a, and you're a male, and they and a lot of these men see you, they want it. And that's nature, man. That's not an, there's no judgment there. That's nature. It's like, say, if you are, if you like, you know, you know, burgers or snacks, you could get drive through meals. Say you like drive through meals, and you're walking somewhere, and somebody throws a cheeseburger right in front of you. I guarantee you might not reach for that bitch, but you're going to follow it with your eyes and see where it lands. And then you're going to consider things and maybe make a choice. But, shit, what was I talking about, dude? Um, Oh, yeah, you got to be careful. A lot of men out there if you go running. But anyway, if I'm running and I jog past someone and they don't acknowledge, that's what it gets me. You know, that just gets my damn gander. It just gets my gander in a Gandalf, boy. And just, God, God dang it. I hate, like, what? You, what? We, I just went a mile, bro. You just went a mile. You're not going to hey? And that's the kind of shit makes me question how we're doing. How we're doing as a species. You know? And I see some, man, I'll tell you this. I see a lot of fast Asians out there. A lot of FAs and... And they don't touch the ground when they run. You see a Asian, they really they 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 want they run like the world is hot, like the you know, they run kind of uh their legs are a little bit they're uh they always run at the stoplight. A lot of Asians are those people they that will continue to run at a stoplight. They don't stop. I'll stop, I'll push the button, you know, I'll fist bump the homeless dude that's there. You know, maybe give him a couple coins, a couple, you know, dime pieces or whatever, a couple ten pieces. But uh, Asian, they they just keep, they're ready to rock. Um, So, yeah, that, you know, that's been something I've been dealing with when I've been doing a lot of miles in the area. And I've been running, I've been running. And it feels good. I, I, I kind of got started to get a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um. You know, because your comfort zone, man, can really, can really be your coffin. And, and so I used to only run two miles and I hated it. I hated every step. I hated the beginning of the run. I hated the end. I hated um, the part between the beginning and the end. So all of it. And when I start, when I, when I, uh, but one day I said, you know what? I'm going to run. I had a little bit extra energy. And energy is just, that, that's that, it's just that, it's kind of when God just says, all right, here you go, bro. And hooks you up with some free shit, you know? All right, here you go, bro. Here's a little scoop of marmalade, bro, in your heart. Now go, 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 boy, go. Um, And so I had a little extra energy. So I said, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take a different route. And when I changed my route, that, that that really changed everything for me with running. Because suddenly it was a little bit more of an adventure. It wasn't the same old, same old. 
And next thing you know, I'd gone like a eight a quarter mile further. So I'm doing time, you know, I'm out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing, you know, I'm doing time like the future, bro. I'm out there. And and so then the next time I ran, I said, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do that new trek again. Now it was exciting to me. And then Next thing you know, I, I, I said, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go two and a half miles. I'm doing two and a quarter. I'll do two and a half, bro. You know, I'll burn another quarter of this bad bitch. Um, you know, I'll, I'll serve another slice of bad bitch bacon to myself. And so next thing you know, now I'm at two and a half. And now I'm like, you know what, I'm going uh, to see how fast I'm going. I'm going to keep time for myself, make it a little bit of a game, make it a little bit of a challenge. Or challenge, French challenge. And so then, then it adds up, and next thing you know, I'm running, and I'm doing three mile, three and a half, bro, three and a quarter stars. Um, yeah. So that, anyway, that's been my adventure. That's been my experience in my adventure with running. And now you know, I'll go do three and three quarter miles. I did it today. I walked the last uh three quarter miles though because I just got it like had like an attitude kind of a little bit of a kind of a not a meltdown but like a just just they had a fucking homeless dude and he was shadow boxing over by the interstate and i jog right by the interstate bro because that's who i am some people jog safe areas bro fuck that dude i want to be by the interstate i want to hear a van going by you know i want to hear that bitch going right by my ear I want to. I want to be able to hear somebody inside a van, inside a shitty van. I want to hear two kids, two fat kids in the back of a shitty van, sipping a Shasta. That's how close I want that van to be. You know, I like to be right on the edge because I run. You know, I run faster. I feel like if I know that that uh, that the Grim Reaper kind of has one eye on me. You know, and I've always been like that. But, yeah, so anyway, I like to run out there. And this dude, they had a, uh, I don't want to say homeless, but this guy was definitely, you know, covered in dirt and looked like he didn't know where his parents were at. And he was probably about 38. So, you know, he could have been, um, he could have been, no, he couldn't have. He, yeah, this is a homeless guy. Anyway, he's out there shadow boxing, and it looked like he had shadow boxed under some real, uh, under some good trainers. You know, it looked like maybe Tony Jeffries or something had, you know, had trained him at one point. Like the guy had some skills. So I had to go even further around, and I got pissed. And then at one point, he threw a glass item at me. And so that shit made me, I, I felt like I needed to be a little bit more on alert. So. That's when I shut the run down and just went into a little bit more of defense mode and just kind of kept my eye on the premises in the area while I went by. Um, Because there's a lot of homeless are stacking up around me. It's getting pretty stacky in the the vagrancy department out here. But anyway, uh, it's ladies night. (laughs) Hey, you you get in there, there's like some drunk girl. And she, she's like, oh, she's hooking up with the bartender. She won't shut up. She's like, Bleh. I'm a, I'm a junior. Bleh. And you're like, damn, I just want to buy this batch of hot air balloon and fill the tank up with freaking with gasoline and launch that batch, you know, out over the ocean and see what God wants to do. Um, but thank you guys. Thank you guys for supporting, uh, me. I hope you're having a good week. You know, I was dealing with some depression, honestly, man, this past week. And, uh, so I've been trying to find my way out of that funk. You know, I hate, uh, I hate feeling like that. And I hate sometimes, and I, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, I just, I hate feeling like that, man. I hate it when I feel that way. Um, but I'm learning to be a little less hard on myself and just say, you know, sometimes not every moment is going to be, you know, not every moment is going to be a mountaintop, you know, and sometimes you're going to be, you're going to feel low down and you're going to feel like the, some, like somebody's just like, 
just like the world just has a shovel in it. It just keeps hitting you in the head because you you feel so low in the dirt. Um, so, yeah, I've been trying to just get out of some of that. And so that's why I try to do a little bit more running, uh, you know, and just trying to take care of myself. You know, Sometimes it's hard for it's hard for me to want to take care of myself. It's hard, man. It's hard. And I don't even know why sometimes, why I you know, God gives me so many gifts, so many, you know, blessings in my life and and um and I still don't, I still don't want to sometimes, you know, take care of myself. I don't want to do what's best for me. I want to be, you know, I want to be lazier. I want to be, you don't want to dance, you know, just not take care of myself. Just not do, you know, I want to sulk. I want to be, mm, um, what is it called? I want to have self-pity, you know, I want to do all of that instead. Um, and that's how I know, you know, depression is a real thing and anxiety, that kind of stuff. It's, it's a, it, that, that's real stuff, you know, and that's, and that is some of, that's some of the dark arts. And we've been saying that. And, um, and I know a lot of people are going through that. You know, there's a lot of time, that we, you know, we're just by ourselves. I mean, dude, my couch, if you look at my couch, the, 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 my couch has one one big ass cushion, you know, because it costs extra if you want to you want them to cut that cushion into three pieces. It costs extra if you want it cut. You know, that's like when I used to work over there at BJ's Pizza over there by Claiborne Hill, and they say, "All right, we want that large. We want that large meat," because that's what we had. Large. We had meat and non meat. Those were the two main. Those were our lead pies. And they said, "All right." And then for sixty cents extra, we'll cut that bitch up. But if you but if you trying to save money, if you cutting corners, then we ain't cutting that pie, baby. So, um. But yeah, you know. Anyway, I'm not trying to delve. I'm not trying to dwell. But yeah, you know, my cut my sofa look like. I mean, damn, that thing look like a. Uh, you ever see a picture of the ocean when they say the ocean, if it's empty, or what it looks like at the bottom? That's how my sofa cushion is starting to look. Like, that thing has been in a damn gangbang with my fat ass. And it is, uh, it has not been winning. Um, so yeah, just trying to stay motivated and get moving, and just get my feet moving, and doing the things I know, talking to friends, and not isolating. You know, my, uh, when I start feeling depressed, man, it's isolation is what I want to do, but it's not what really helps me. Um, and then I, and, and when I feel depressed, man, I can't see my blessings. I can't see the, the good things that are out there looking for me because the Lord threw a lot of chocolates out in my life, man. And these bitches are looking for me and I'm not talking about sisters, bro. I'm talking about real, you know, just sweet options. You know, there's a lot of. If I want to see the good, it's always there. It's just a matter if I really want to look for it or not. Or not even if I really want to look for it, just if I want to see it for what it is. Um, anyway, I'm kind of rambling, but I'm, I'm just, you know, I know some people are probably struggling right now. and uh, And I'm trying to be a leader for myself. I was, you know, I was thinking about leadership and, and just... Man, sometimes it's hard to be, you know, it's a, it sucks sometimes when you're, res when you were responsible for yourself. Sometimes that sucks. I'm like, damn, can't, you know, sometimes I, I want to wish that we were all lived in some matrix or matriarch, matriarch or something where something was controlling all of us just so it wasn't my responsibility. You know, I don't want my life, sometimes I don't want my life to be my responsibility. Sometimes. Um, and it used to be all the time for me, man, when I was, 
When I was younger, but I said, damn. I didn't want, I didn't want to, the last thing I wanted to do was be responsible for myself. Um, but, you know, we do, uh, you know, I've just been trying to do the things that are different, you know, I've been trying to take action and, and, and be grateful and, and do things like that. So that's where we are and that's where we are today. And, uh, I'm grateful for you guys. We got a lot of nice calls. Um, that came into the hotline, 985-664-9503. And, um, and, you know, we had, you know, I wanted to see about crime out there. Because when, you know, you know a lot of crime. I mean, I almost got hit by a damn, you know, uh, a homeless guy slinging glass out there. And homeless dudes, you don't know what, they'll break out whatever. That dude, you know what I'm saying? You'll bring a knife to a damn lawnmower fight. Or he'll break out a side of a boat. You're like, damn, this guy. This guy about to beat my ass with a damn, uh, you know, with a uh, starboard. So the, the, they, they're they playing on a different ball field. You know? You'll bring a baseball bat and he'll bring a fucking, um, you know, he'll bring two uh, escalator stairs. You're like, damn, this guy, this dude ain't playing, man. He's about to beat the up-down out of me, bro. This guy's about to beat the damn up-down out of me. Um, We had some calls that came in. I wanted to hear how uh, different places in the world were dealing with and 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 what your what your corona was like your corona time and so we got some calls that came in here right here this is nicole from malaysia and beautiful place over there malaysia and i actually saw a couple of monkeys over there steal a bag of chips from a thick thick urban chick and um and they went at least two rounds bro you thought it was going to end there but you know, a big girl don't want to lose that that chip sack. Gang shit onward. Hey, Theo. It's Nicole calling from Penang, Malaysia. Hey, Nicole. And thank you for calling in from Penang there. And Malaysia, I don't know. I've been to Malaysia, actually. I just told you that. And it's, uh, man, it's like the beach went to the beach. That's how, that's how beachy it is. And it is, it's humid. Dude, I remember I took my shirt off and they had two goldfish swimming in my belly button. I mean, it's that, it's humid. You'll find a damn starfish come out from under your arm. Onward. Because in one of your recent episodes, you said you wanted to hear from more people who live internationally. We're still in quarantine over here and we probably will be until the end of Ramadan, which is near the end of May, because they're real worried about people having large gatherings for Ramadan since it's a majority Muslim country. Shout out Muslims, brother. Shout out Slims, baby, all day. Onward. So even though we don't have a lot of cases at all, we're going to be in lockdown for a while longer, which sucks. And I'm a senior in high school, so we're all just hoping that they'll ease up on the restrictions in time for us to have graduation because we really don't want to miss that. It's crazy here because it's actually illegal to exercise outside, so we can't run or walk our dogs or bike outside at all. And I got stopped by the police for going on a run by myself. So you can't really be outside at all unless you have evidence that you're going to the grocery store. And that's the only time when oh. you can be outside. So that kind of sucks because we're really locked in here. Wow. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Thanks for, uh, for that message. Wow. I can't believe you guys are really. I mean, you can't even take a dog. Yeah, I guess you just have to have a dog. Just teach a dog to what urinate inside. Or use a toilet. Wow. That's bad. That's insane. But um, but that's beautiful. I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that that's, that, you know, you guys are able to, I guess, help the animals like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, that makes me think at least I can go for a run, you know. And, wow, you can't exercise. 
You got stopped by the police for just, for fitness. Dude, that reminds me, one time I was jogging in the Midwest. And I was in a real, and that's the real thick belt. I don't know if you've been to the Midwest, but damn, you won't. I mean, you'll have a thigh, you know. Your thigh will just show up out of nowhere. They got a damn somebody. They have, you know, you'll see a some fella got hamstrings with real ham on them. You're like, dang, boy. That's that salty back, that's that salty back strap. Um, and I was going for a jog and somebody stopped. Some guy's like, he pulled over. He's like, you okay? What's happening, buddy? You all right? What's going on? What? And I was like, huh? I'm just... He's like, what are you running from, man? You scared of something? I was like, nah, man, I'm this is fitness, buddy. I'm doing I'm doing fitness. I'm an adult, man. But wow, we're really putting that in perspective and you to be in school and not know if you'll be able to have that graduation experience. Wow. Hmm. You know, that puts it into perspective for me for sure. You know, we got a lot to be grateful for. And uh I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. Your attitude seems really good, though, Nicole. I appreciate you sharing that with with uh, with me, and and you know, and just sharing a little bit of what's going on over there. And then, wow, yeah, if it comes in a religious territory, um, which I like, you know, I like there being some religion. And you didn't sound negative about it, and I appreciate that. You know, not that you would, but you know, I like. I, I think it's a good time for people to have faith and. And the fact that, you know, people are going to say, okay, not only have I been going through this, but that doesn't negate that I'm going to try and still have my faith. Um, you know, because if I, you know what I'm saying, I've been a half, uh, I've been one of those kind of half breed Christians, you know, where I, you know, or, you know, my faith is always, you know, I grew up, I, I didn't really have a lot, you know, I had, I was around a lot of it. And we would go to church and stuff, but in my heart, I didn't really know much. Um, but so that's real special that people are able to have faith and 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 uh, you know that they're not letting that discount saying, okay, well, look, I, you know, we did the COVID, so now we don't have to do, you know, we don't have to do the fasting, we don't have to do this or that. That's pretty powerful. Uh, but thank you, thank you for that update from um, from the Malay, the Malay people over there, beautiful. All right, let's take another call here, and this is from Prague right here, and this is uh, Sean Hotchman. Let's go, Hotch. Hey, Theo, this is Sean. I'm in Prague in the Czech Republic. Thank you for calling Sean from Czech Republic. And when I actually visited there, they had a man pickpocketed me, and this guy was small. This guy had the smallest damn hands, bro. You couldn't even... I mean, this guy... Oh... No one, you could barely feel, you know, he could put, dude, he could almost put both hands and both feet in your pocket and you couldn't feel it. Think about that. Think about having four appendages in a damn pant pocket and you can't even feel the person in there and that's dark magic right there. Let's hear more. Wanted to see how things were elsewhere in the world. We've been on lockdown for about six weeks now. Things are slowly starting to get back to normal. As you can see, there's a bunch of other people out here on the bridge. Still, everybody wears their mask outside, but people are starting to go back out to the parks. Some of the stores are up and back up. And I think by the middle of June, things might be get, getting back to being more or less normal. Looks like the borders are gonna be closed for the rest of the summer, but uh, maybe after this is all done, you can plan another European tour. Love to see you, bye. Gang, thanks, Sean. Interesting. So yeah, that sounds pretty similar. I think things are starting to loot people people are starting to loosen up, make the choice. Some people. You know, and and that's what life is like that. It's just a you know, it's a lot of just Hansel and Gretel. And that's who we are, really. We you know, we're curious creatures. Damn it. I'm sorry, Sean. But yeah, you get that, you know, people, I notice it too. The traffic's getting more in Los Angeles. People are doing more things, more thoughts trying to holler. Um, more gay dudes even. You know, out here in L.A., there's a thing now. If you go running, if you go running on your feet 
and without a mask, that is a apparently it's like a pickup thing for men that like other that like other men. And so it's like the new remember if you used to put your foot out under the uh, bathroom stall wall in Minnesota or whatever. You know, you used to drop that boot over there and that other dude's little shitter. And then bam, next thing you, you know, y'all playing freaking hide that Rodney. Um, but what was this, what were we talking about? Uh, but what I'm telling you is, or what I'm what I'm sharing right now is just that yeah, people are gonna make their own choices. And so I, I you know, I understand when some people are like, we need to liberate, we need to, you know. I was talking to my brother-in-law or something. I think we might be second cousins or not second cousins, but I don't know. Somebody fucked somebody, honestly. And that's how we're, you know, cousin-in-law. And he was saying, well, like you have counties in Texas where uh, they had four cases of it. So what do those people do? Like they, you know, how do they get back to work? How do they... They can't start their universe back up. Um, so it's tricky, man. It's tricky to see. But I think humans, you know, we're going to have our own sense at a certain point of when's okay to venture back out and to get things popping and, to, you know, feel the world and know if it's safe. Um, and know if it's safe for us and what our level, what, what, what's safe for me. You know, I'm risky. You know, I'm that risky biscuit. You know what I'm saying? You could put jam on me, bro. You could put pepper. You could put damn rubber cement on my back. You know what I'm saying? I'm still a snack, dog. So, gang shit. You feel me? But uh but thank you for sharing this beautiful and if you, and and both um both of these call these last two callers were from uh on video. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see uh these people's beautiful faces and and um and Sean is from right here uh, on on a famous bridge right there in Prague. Let me see, famous bridge in Prague, and that bridge is called the Charles Bridge, named after a white. So beautiful man. Thank you, brother. Thanks for calling in and be safe over there. And 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 yeah, it's definitely it's like people's idea of what's safe is different. Uh, people's idea of what's safe is different. I did read uh, that the there are now 50,000 deaths in the U.S. from um, COVID-19, coronavirus. And you, uh, and every year the n- pneumonia gets that many people as well. Every year, pneumonia does. Um. And I, I, I really believe that if we didn't have, if 20 years ago this happened, I don't think you would have heard anything about it. I really don't. I don't think you would have heard anything about it. I think it would have just been like, oh, this year is a strong flu season. Um, we have a flu that's lasted late. Um, and that's, I, I think that that's where it kind of would have landed. But now you have the 24-hour news cycle, so you got to fill that news bank. You have to do it. There used to be two hours of news. There was morning news and there was evening news. And then they would do a late evening in case you was by over, you know, you had a little side piece over and y'all wanted to do, you know, look at something before y'all went over there and touched each other's bodies or something or split a steak or something. But... But now it's 24. So so they used to be able to pack the whole news into those three hours. And some of the stories would double over. Now there's 21 more hours of news. So they got to fill that with something. And that's where I think hysteria really began, where the news is like, okay, what can we do? What's, and then at a certain point, what's selling for us? What's keeping people hooked on the screen? Uh, so I really believe that. And, and, um, I really believe that if we didn't have the 24 hour news cycle, that we wouldn't, that this would just be kind of a strong flu season that had came and gone. Now I know that this is stronger 
this has a this thing has a higher kill rate than other than other uh, flus, but but I just think it that's what it would have been. Um, but hey, what do I know, right? And I might be wrong, also. So, really good chance of that. Let's take one more video call that came in, and this is a gentleman from Dubai right here. Uh, gang. What's up, Theo? This is Hunter checking in from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Gang, gang. Actually... What's up, Hunter? Thank you for checking in, brother, uh, from Dubai. Onward. An American, but I live here full time now. I uh, just wanted to give you some insight on what's going down in this country. It's pretty strict right now. Uh, we have handled it well, and it's been kind of contained to one busier area of the city, um, and everywhere else is doing pretty good. But you have to apply for a permit anytime you go outside, anytime. And now they've restricted it to where you can only leave and go places every three days. So we're kind of just huddled up, um, hunkered down. But shout out to companies like Kareem and Zomato. Um, that's like our version of Postmates. They're delivering food still. And other than that, Dubai's interesting. It's um, definitely still kind of a third world country scenario. But um, pre-COVID, it was very almost overemployed. There's virtually no unemployment, no homelessness. Um, to that though there is a dark side these guys aren't these guys from like karachi pakistan dhaka bangladesh and various places like that they're just they're not getting paid well and it's rough living scenarios and because of this now they're just not working at all so there's actually been a spike in homelessness and people who are stranded and the airports are closed so they can't get back to their home country so that is a sad thing to see but other than that we're holding it down um Thanks for everything you do. Gang, gang. There is gang, bro. Thank you, Hunter, for that message, man. And that's information as well as a message. Wow. Yeah, you don't think of that. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, or you do think of it. Maybe you do. That the whole, you know, it's in every place it's, it's going on. And I'm not trying to, this isn't like a, uh, I'm not trying to make this be a downer thing. I'm trying to just share what it's like from around the globe, you know? Um, you know, I'm not trying to make us feel bad about anything. I'm not trying to feel bad about it. You know, this is what life is. Life is, I mean, life, think about what life has been for some people. Think about some man was born, imagine this, some man was born somewhere in a forest maybe, or, you know, in like a, like a, like a thick, thick, thick forest. And he don't know anything and he, you know, he grows up and he doesn't, his parents don't have much money or whatever. And he just, he does woodworking, he does basic stuff. And then he, you know, one day he sees maybe like, a, you know, he sees like a, a beautiful bird or something. Maybe a robin, like a red robin, a red breasted robin. And, and that's like, that's like his the best part of his life and he and then he dies and his family dies and and that's his life his life with that one thing when he saw that robin it was everything for him that was his that was his you know having a family that was his prom that was his you know getting married that was his that was his that was the that was it that was his his life um and that's a life. That's a that that's a beautiful life. That's in its own place. The Robin Man. But it's different when you get, you know, we're used to like fancier lives, getting to do this and getting to do that. And and now some of that has just been adjusted. Um But thank you for that information from there from Dubai and what it's like and that wow, being stranded, I would hate that. That would be tough, man, because people are gonna do what they're gonna do at a certain point. People gonna buck. Little little Charlie gonna buck. Little Assad gonna buck. Little Yeeham over here. Or Chin, you know, little Chin Strap or whatever your boy's name is, Viet. People gonna get buck, dog. Somebody's gonna fucking hum a glass bottle at, at a jogger. You know what I'm saying? People gonna start to bend a little. And see what they can do. Um you know, also, I wanted to know if there was, if, if law enforcement, how they were dealing with some of the, uh, if there was a spike in crime or what like that. 
and we had a um well we had two officers that called i want to get one right here listen to this vm right here uh okay here we go uh, Let's get the fuzz on the line here. What's up, Theo? My name's Isaiah, man. You said any officers of the law call in with your, your statements about the domestics right now raising up just because of the COVID and everything going on? Uh, thank you, Isaiah. Uh, thanks for your service, and thanks for, uh, and thanks for calling in, brother. Let's hear more. And, uh, yeah, man, it's been, it's been crazy out here, dude. I mean, I think in the month of March alone, domestics where I'm from have doubled. I'm in the Dayton, Ohio area. Gang shit Dayton, baby. Them Flyers, huh? What about your boy Troutman? I think he just got drafted by them New Orleans Saints, boy. You know it. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, if you've never been to the United Air Force Museum, I think it's called, in Dayton, I would go out on a limb to call it probably one of the top six museums in America. One of the top six American uh, museums or museos which is Spanish. Let's hear more, sir. So we had a domestic like, a couple weeks back. Homeboy sneaking out a fire escape, dude. He gets down this fire escape, getting out, and he fucking realizes there's no ladder to take him from here to there to the ground. So he's just stuck up there, you know, shirtless. He's got his shorts on. He's like, fuck, man. We're standing in the alley like, hey, man, you got nowhere to go. So, you know, that's just a little glimpse of what it's like, but... uh Appreciate you, man. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. Take care. Thank you, sir. I appreciate uh, appreciate the call. Yeah. And that's real. I mean, a lot of men stranded on the fire escape, aren't they? Aren't I mean, that's just a euphemism. I mean, that guy should run for mayor of my damn heart. Because that is just, that should be our national bird. A shirtless man on a fire escape with nowhere to go. I mean, name a better one. Didn't think you could. And that shit mean, yeah. And two officers down there, like, look, buddy, we, my, if you look, then then jump, then jump, buckaroni, okay? Jump if you survive, dude. I'll take you over there to Buca de Beppa down there, on the, you know, down by the south side, down by the damn water, and we'll buy you a freaking uh, pepperoni bread. Hmm. But yeah, that's really, oh, that's how I feel though a lot of times. Just I feel shirtless and I feel like I'm just on the fire escape of my own life. Praise God, brother. Uh, thank you for that, sir. And you guys stay safe out there. But yeah, domestics are going up. Domestics going up on a Sunday. You know that shit's getting hot. You know it's getting hot in the house. A lot of spouses saying, hey, uh, honey, will you turn the AC on? It is on, okay? It is on, Ronald. It's ladies' night. It is on. Cut it on, Jack. The AC is on. Oh, really? Dang, because it's hot in here. It sure is. That's because we got 200 degrees of your bullshit. And a lot of these thotty ass ladies out there too. Being sneaky and being little snackadactyls. You know and texting different men and stuff like this. And Facebooking they college heroes and shit. I'm telling you man these domestics. It's because you can't put. If you put too much fire in a furnace bro. Something's going to get cooked. Mm. And hey, look, I hate to say it, but we might end up with a few beautiful episodes of Dateline out of all of this. And I don't want people to die, but I do want more Dateline. And you just, you know, that's you got to wonder how that'll all work out. All right, let's hit the hotline here, 985-664-9503. Um, and if you've, been, if you've been having a relationship, if you think, you know, if you if you guys have come to a conclusion that divorce is the deal now for you, 
Um, and you think it's because of uh, the disease, brother, that's in the air or in the nothing or whatever in the water. Then hit us up and let us know, 985-664-9503. Here's a call that came in right here. Mr. Theo Vaughn, this is Doug from Florida. Oh, what's up, Doug? And you know, one of my early friends, man, probably maybe one of my first human friends, this beautiful boy named uh, Doug Huval. And he had, he, I mean, this boy was just chiseled. His head was real chiseled, like his head had been working out. Like his head got up early before he even woke up and went to the damn gym. And then came and got back on his neck for breakfast, you know, kind of that kind of boy. And I met him in first grade, and he stuttered. He had a stutter. Something had happened to him, been hit by something, or, you know, or just had a, you know, had that fucking giddy, that little hitch in his giddy. And uh, he had that, you know, just something, boy. Like the Lord had just hit him in the damn neck with a uh, with a one by two, you know? Nothing heavy, but hardy enough to fucking really sting, you know? Um, But his name was Doug. Onward? Florida, it's a great place to get baptized and also fall into Satanism. Oh, yeah. Florida's a great place, man. If you like pyramid schemes and if you hope one of your, if you don't mind one of your kids maybe getting kind of, you know, reached at by an adult a little but they also got bush gardens so you can't win them all baby but yeah a little bit of satanism bro gang brother onward brother anyway man just like a random coronavirus thought man dude i miss shaking people's hands man i'm a handshaker i'm just a gentleman and i want to walk up to another gentleman and shake that motherfucker's hand enthusiastically. Uh, what do you think of a world without handshaking, dude? Um, there's been talk of the Japanese bow. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the military salute. My s- anyway, man, what's the future looking like, dude? Gang, gang. Gang, Doug. Thank you, man. That's a good question. What does it look like? What does the future look like? You know, who's going to, you know, who's going to be doing what? You know, who, how, you know what's it going to look like? I seen a guy the other day who had a Halloween mask on. He's over there looking like, damn, he's, you know, Pokemon. And he's eat, picking avocados out. It's unique, man. It's, uh, yeah, handshake. Do I want it? I like it. You know, I like it. We had a guy calling in the past, Drippy Mitts McGillicuddy, this beautiful fella, this d- dude. I think his name might have been Steven, maybe. I don't know. I don't have the notes in front of me. And beautiful young man. And he had those slippery fronts on his paws. You know, he had the thing you couldn't even ha- shake his hand because it would just slip in, at, in and out of you. It would slip in and out of, your, out of your grip like a damn eel. Like an eel eating freaking jelly or jam. And it, uh, you know, so handshake and the fist bump had kind of taken over a little. It's human touch. Human touch. It's, it's disappearing, man. It's been disappearance. You know, you try and hug somebody, not to act like you a dang, you know, they... You know, it's like a second degree assault. In L.A., you hug somebody. They call it love assault. This place. Over here in Hollyweird. Um, what do I want for the future? I like the bow. I do think the bow is pretty cool. It's very kind of nouveau, artsy. You know, it's a little bit of like kind of a little bit of, okay, okay. You know, a little bit of honor, a little bit of... It's a lot of trust, too, with the bow because you're taking your eyes off of your opponent for a second when you look down, you know. The handshake, look in the eyes. The fist bump. Yeah, it's the future. What do you guys think the future looks like? Do you think there's going to be some things in the future we're not thinking of that could disappear or that could be, you know, 
non that not that won't happen anymore. I personally think that we'll just be taking people's temperatures at places. You know, I think that that's not a bad idea. You know, if somebody brings their little kid, little freaking uh, you know, Dylan or whatever his name is, little dar little darler or whatever little freaking uh, you know, little freaking sp- you know, little Ethan little sneaky ass Ethan, bro. And he this is the kind of kid he'll pick his nose with all nine fingers, bro. You know what I'm saying? He'll pick his nose till he pulls one of his eyes out of it. This little freaking beehole. And he goes to the to the slip and slide or whatever to the um kids gym, Gymboree or whatever. That place over by the highway for 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 $6. They let your kid bounce around on a fishing net with a couple of damn uh, beach balls on it or something, you know. But they had, uh, what the hell am I talking about? I don't know, man. Um, but the, uh, a lot of places now they they take the kids' temperature. Uh, in a lot of in, in a lot of countries, they take a temperature when you go somewhere. Oh, this kid's dirty. Get him out of here. This kid hot. Get that little hot, get his hot ass out of here, little Heath. Oh, that's a little hot Heath. You know what I'm saying? Here, here's a little sack of ice or something. Put it in his pockets and fucking get his little ass out of here. So I think you you will see some stuff like that. What do you guys think you're going to see? 985-664-9503. Here's a call that came in right here. That stimulus check, this man onward. Yo, Theo, this is Ben from Baltimore. What up, Ben from Baltimore? Um, in Baltimore, they got a lot of people on that methadone. They got people smoking methadone over there. So they got a lot of, a lot of crispy wiggers out there, dog, on that methadone, bro. Gang shit onward. I'm on my way to work this morning. Now, during this whole time, I'm... Like, I manage a grocery store and stuff while I'm going to school and everything. So, I've been working this whole time. And I wanted to get your thoughts on something. So, this whole time, I thought the stimulus check shit was a big hoax. Like, I thought it was, like, like on Smitty Bravo shit, like a, a government-started internet meme to try to get the mass society to, like, stop panicking and kind of calm down so that they'll work and stuff. And then one day, I'm, like, explaining this to everybody. I'm like, dude, this is fake. No one's getting a fucking stimulus check. One day I wake up, I got a fucking stimulus check. So my thing is, though, is this just Trump preying on my generation and younger generations who don't think about the future and are very impulsive, giving them mass amounts of money that they're going to spend immediately and not think about it? Man. You know, I think at some point, you just got to be grateful. You know, you can't think everything is a conspiracy. And look, I appreciate your call, man. I appreciate the call. It's a good, you know, there's a lot of things these days that makes you wonder. A lot of things make us wonder. You know, is this real? What's going on here? What's really going on? Is there a bigger thing that I can't see here? I love that. I love thinking that way. But I don't want to think it to a level where I don't see the blessings that are around me. You know, you got twelve hundred dollars. You got whatever, whatever it was six hundred to two. You know, you got a check. You have a government that gave you money. Maybe say, "Hey, that's that's awesome. I'm lucky to be in this country where we are able to do that." You know, everybody didn't get it, so you're you're really you're fortunate right there. You know, I notice in my own uh, neighborhood they have. There's a gym that's near me and or a community center and they have campers outside all the homeless people or a lot of them that want that were mentally able to not live like in the rain or in the park. They put them in campers. They came and put them all in campers. That's pretty incredible to, to, to live in a country, to live in a place where that's where that's something that's done. You know, I get mad, you know, like, I try to support our government no matter who they are. You know, because I I live pretty comfortably. You know, I live pretty comfortably. I live in a place that has roads. 
You know, I live in a place where there's clean water, clean enough that's coming out of my faucet. Um, you know, I live in a place where if I'm struggling so much, there's someone close to me, probably a neighbor that could help. You know, I live in a place where there's entertainment usually. I live in a place where I can think. I live in a place where I can still go to the grocery. Um, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine from Russia the other day. She told me that her parents, you have to apply to go into the city every time you go in. And you then then whenever you get there, you can only go do the things you, you had said you were going to do. You know, the gentleman that called from Dubai, you have to, you know, I think he said you had to fill out a form or something. If you want to go to certain places, you can only go to the market. Man, there's a lot, you know, it's, so maybe just say, hey. You know, yes, the earth is flat, but this stimulus check ain't, boy. So I wouldn't think, you know, I don't know if, I mean, yeah, look into it, but don't look too far into it where you don't recognize that, that you were, that we're pretty fortunate. You know, we're pretty fortunate, man. Um, you know, we just have so many blessings, man. We have so many blessings, I feel like, uh. And, and, uh, gang, bro. All right, let's take a, another call here. What else has been going on? Nothing. It's ladies night. <laughs> Damn, it's ladies night, man. No, it's, dude, it was never ladies night, man. Oh, dude, when I think back to some of them, uh, dude, I have hooked up with some real, Hardy, hardy sevens, man, and eights probably. I I say eight usually because if a woman, as long as a woman will brush her teeth, all of her teeth too. Some ladies, some lazy ass ladies, just brush the tops. Oh no, miss! That's why God gave you all the teeth. You got to wash them all. And I remember when I was young, my mother, we had a toothbrush and she wrote on it, do all of them. Because, you know, I get lazy. I only want to brush the tops and them chompers. I don't want to fucking hit that support staff at the bottom. So. um, What's well, something I was going to talk to you about that's been going on? Oh, I started doing piano practicing. So... Pretty excited about that. I've been doing Duolingo. Yo entiendo más español. I am understanding more Spanish. I've been doing Duolingo, man. Duolingo is cool if you haven't ever seen it. We don't work for them or they don't they don't work for us, but I really like it. Um what else? Mm. I was thinking about going home. I was thinking about taking a trip home, see some family. Let's take a call right here. Here we go. Uh, hey, Theo. This is Hunter from up here in northern British Columbia. Ooh, British Columbia, dude. Thank you for calling there from the UK, my man, gang, brother. Uh, I was just listening to your 17th episode of your podcast this past weekend and you said something about wanting to bring the father to the family that you um were emancipated to to the masters because he was obsessed with golf i don't know if that made sense but he wanted to take this man to the masters and he uh was the father of a family that you apparently lived with for a little while when you're younger but i just wanted was curious if you did that or if you still plan on doing that and uh just wanted to let you know that you help, help a lot of people out, including myself. And we love you and you. we're proud of you, man. Thanks. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for the nice words, man. Uh, I love you too, bro. Gang, dog. Um, yeah, actually, one thing that, you know, I didn't get to take. We made the plan this year to take my stepdad to the Masters. When I was 14, I went to live with a friend of mine's family. 
and they had, you know, they had opened their doors to me, and so I went and lived over there, and and it was fun, man. They didn't have any pets, but they had some other children, and we really, you know, it was just more of a safe, and it was more of an environment where there was more, it was just more emotionally comfortable than the one I was in. Um... I just couldn't survive. I couldn't mentally survive in my own house anymore. Uh, And I don't know if that really was to anyone's fault. I think it was just what my path was going to be. And, you know, and I was gifted with enough, uh, you know, just I got, you know, there were people that cared enough and they invited me to live with them. And we had fun. And the man has always been a, a, a good role model for me. And his name is Rhett. And he, uh, he is a adult and he, he liked, he loved golf. And so for years I wanted to take him to the masters and, you know, I had a good year last year work wise. And so I got us a trip. We were going to go to last week. We were going to go to the masters and we had a nice Airbnb and we were all square. Um, and this virus hit, so You know, I just hope that he's, you know, and he had started walking around the neighborhood more and just getting ready to go. And, uh, and I'm glad, you know, for sometimes I think, oh man, you know, I don't know if I want to spend this money or I don't want to, but then once I had made the decision to, man, it was, I was so excited and it was fun. Just went on Airbnb and looking at places and asking friends and, um, you know, when people wanted to help, they wanted to let me know what's a good place to stay in a good area, and uh, we were going to have some fun. But that's not going to happen this year, but when they hopefully when they repost it up, the, the golf tournament, then, then we'll be able to go. So thank you for asking. That was sweet of you. Um, yeah, man, when I think about so many, about the people in my life that have cared about me, man... A lot, a lot of people. I think that's one, you know, sometimes it's like, man, why, you know, why I sometimes can't find the, why I can't care about myself sometimes, it just blows my mind. You know, just why it's so like, man, why is it, why is it just so hard to care about yourself? It's just, it's just hard. It's just sometimes, it's just hard, man. But a thing that does help, though, is thinking about other people caring about me. When you think about the people that have cared about you, think about it. Think of somebody used to give you a ride or somewhere you needed. You know? Somebody who let you, you, you who let you borrow their car. Somebody who let you borrow maybe a couple, you know, Cut some melon or a little bit of money. You know, maybe somebody that used to write you letters when you moved away or somebody that uh, that called you to tell you that they loved you. Even, you know, even though you had done something maybe wrong to a mutual friend of y'all's. You know, maybe somebody who you, maybe you put nair in their shampoo you know, 20 years ago, and maybe they still want to bang you every now and then. I mean, it's just, you know, there's a lot of love to be given out there. And a lot of it, I get, I've been given a lot in my days, man. Um, So yeah, thank you for asking about that, because just even you asking about that just made me realize how much that even in times when I didn't know how much I cared about myself, how much other people cared about me. Man, that's pretty powerful, huh? It's pretty powerful to think that love is such a weapon, man. It's such a be- it's such a such a f- just such a damn. You know, you bring enough love to a life fight, and you and you can win every time. You know, it's easy to get the other way, though. It's so easy to get the other way. I, it's so easy to just get on that down downhill. 
but gang, bro. You know, the other day I get a FaceTime video call from my friend, a good friend of mine, Scott. Patrick is his name also. He has two names. That's his legal name. And he's wearing in his ears. He's got uh, earbuds. He loves music. He's a music man. I mean, he's probably been to so many fish shows. He's He would test positive for uh, for damn bass meat in his body. You know, or um, barramundi. Something. Tilapia, at least. And he's got a pair of Raycon earbuds in. And he likes those because they help his music the best, he said. Whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you want what you're listening to to be what you're listening to. Not what your other friends or neighbors or whoever else is listening to. That's why you need a great pair of wireless earbuds. You know, you want something that's going to keep the sound in you. And take you to that second level. But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. Support this past weekend and check out these earbuds. You know Raycon Raycon earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market? Come on. Now you know it. And they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands that you know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 Earbud, is the best one yet. With six hours of playtime, you could listen to it all. You could listen to that movie Roots. Seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and more compact design that gives you a nice noise-isolating fit. There's nothing that any of us can't stand than having to listen to something else, somebody else. They're listening to a um, somebody teach Braille or something at high volume. And since they got some garbage earbuds, you're having to hear it too. Get something quality. And that's what I'm telling you about Raycon. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash Theo. Man, that's a huge discount. You need earbuds or your child needs them, a birthday coming up. Save that money. Save that extra cash. They're already cheaper than other brands. And now get 15% off your order at B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N, buyraycon.com slash T-H-E-O. That's buyraycon.com slash T-H-E-O for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash Theo. Support this past weekend. It's ladies' night, and I'm feeling right. You know, if it's ladies' night or if it's ladies' day, or well, look, sometimes I put on a brassiere and just I, I want to be a be a little thicky thick girl at the house. You know what I'm saying? Not really, but you feel me, dog. What I'm talking about is Postmates. If you're like me, you probably start thinking about what to eat for dinner at about 7 a.m. Yup, that's it. <laughs> Dude, 7 a.m., a picture of a beautiful beef frank will pop into my head. Or a sausage patty or a, uh, you know, a London brawl. And that's why I love using Postmates. Because come dinner time, whoo, all I need to do is break out my phone, get on the Postmates app, and order what my heart has been thinking about. And I love Postmates even more right now because you can get food delivered without leaving the house. It's Corvette approved. You don't even have to open the door. You can say, look, little Larry, set it out there, Larry. I'm going to tip you on the app. Set it out there. They created non-contact deliveries. That's right. Postmates, it's already, you don't have to take the guesswork out of you. Am I going to get Corvid? They going to get Corvid? Keep it clean, baby. So now when you order from local restaurants, everything gets left right outside your door. They also have Postmates pickup which I've been using to order takeout from my favorite local restaurants. That's right. Listen up. You guys can support this past weekend. And you can support your neighborhood spots right now. I've only been ordering local. I order from right down the street. You know what I'm saying? Rob and Diane's Diner. Order from over there. Little Harry's got the rib shack. I do that. Give me some of Harry's ribs, bro. 
but no hair on them. You feel me, dog? I don't want those real cheap ones. If you get a real cheap rib, sometimes they got a little bit of hair at the end. Postmates doesn't just deliver burgers and sushi. They actually make your life easier by picking up everything that you need from Walgreens, 7-Eleven, and dropping it off outside your door. You didn't know that, did you? Well, now you do. Support the podcast. Download Postmates on iOS or Android. Find your favorites and get everything you want delivered within the hour. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. So that means go get your mama's phone, get your cousin's phone, get your little nephew phone, get a ba- get the baby a phone, and, and get the app, and get them an email account and open it up and get the free $100. For a limited time only, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app and use code WEEKEND. That's code WEEKEND for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it, use code WEEKEND. Thank you guys for the love and the support, gang. All right, let's take a call right here and see what's going on right here. This could be right along the veins of what we're discussing, gang. What's up, Theo, you beautiful bastard? This is Tim out of... uh... Indianapolis, Indiana. What's up, Tim, over there in Indianapolis? And uh, I saw somebody, a group of white males, hit a damn, uh, hit some, hit another thicker white male on a dang uh, bird scooter over there, or a lime. Onward. I uh, just listened to the pod, man, and heard you say that love is forgiveness. And uh, this really struck me, man, is like how true that really is. I, I've been with my wife now for almost 11 years. We've been married for uh, almost three, three and a half, I think. Uh, but the, the moral of the story being, man, that without forgiveness, we would have never made it this long. You know, she's definitely forgiven me for some of my stupid shit. I have definitely forgiven her for some of hers as well. Uh, We both went through an opiate addiction. Uh, We've both been clean for over six years. Amen, bro. Amen, dog. Onward. Which is kind of unique. You don't find a lot of couples that actually make it through uh, the the bout of addiction and then get clean and come out the other side and still be together. So uh, she is definitely my other half, man. And uh, without... Without forgiveness, bro, it would never work. Peace, love, gang, gang. Gang, Tim, man, thank you. Thank you for that call. Yeah, man, it's it's really, it's, oh. You know, even when I think back to that family, Tim, that took me in, then they, dude, I was, there, I was there for a week, and I was doing donuts. I had these two beautiful lesbians that lived next door, across the street. You know, one of them was, a, I think one of them was a librarian or alleged librarian. And the other one was just, um, was a lesbian. And, or, you know, just a lesbian. I think unemployed lesbian. But, um, you know, and, you know, I'm doing donuts in her damn yard. And an 84 Ford Escort, dude, with one of the windows that had been broken out with by a damn handgun. And, and yeah. And this family, I just moved in with them, and they forgave me for that. You know, dude, the first night I moved in with the family that I lived with in high school, I'm smoking weed in the bedroom. This is the first time I'd had a bedroom on my own, boy. So I'm living it up, dude. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm fucking living life. I put on some camouflage, dude. I fucking put on a little bit of cologne, and I'm smoking weed. Doing what I do. You know, uh, celebrating. And, uh, and yeah, and the, their other, their son, their, you know, their genital son or whatever it's called, he comes, he knocks on the door and he's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing in here? I said, man, nothing. I lied to him. I said, nothing. Meanwhile, there's weed smoke everywhere, you know, and I'm dressed like fucking Rambo, like some kind of damn dope Rambo. Um, and 
He's like, dude, you don't be doing that shit, man. You can't be doing that shit. And he could have got me thrown out. I mean, I just just moved in. Just crazy, you know. But when I think back to all the things in my life that people have forgiven me for, it's crazy, isn't it? All the things that people still loved me, even though I was greedy or I was selfish or I was just a human. You know. But I, that's a beautiful story, man. And it, um, and thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you for, you know, I think being a pillar of, uh, just a reminder for people that if they're struggling with addiction that, you know, that, I mean, if they're struggling with addiction or marriage, that they could do both. They could really beat both. So, amen, bro. Gang, man. Um, what else we got here, dude? Uh, what what uh, what have I been doing, dude? Been on Facebook a little, man. Facebook, it's it's a lot of people now just DJing in their basement. If you don't notice this, everybody's a DJ now. You know, Icy Gerald or whatever. You know, Snitch and Ricky or whatever. Ice Snitch or whatever. You know what I'm saying? MC fucking cripple and a dude have no leg but he got to um you know turn table so he can he can move music but he can't move and it's everybody you you got a kid he's fucking doing a little bit he'll be turning and a little bit of ariana grande in into some uh into some deaf leopard he'll be crossing some tracks and then beat his son at the same you know the kid will come down dad i need some milk you want some milk bro here you go bro you get that milky hand, bruh. You get 2% of that hand, son. Gang shit. So, a lot of kids are really... I mean, think about that child, that memory as a child. All you remember is you couldn't go outside. They had disease allegedly outside. And your dad's a, a DJing in the basement for his high school friends. So, it's shit's, shit's happening. We had another officer of the law that called in. Let's get that call here. Hey, CEO, this is Kyle out in St. Louis, Missouri. What's up, Kyle, out of St. Louis? And St. Louis is famous for the arch and also for um, this comedian's up-and-coming comedian. Chris D'Elia actually is canceled there uh, doing his show. There. Let's hear more. In my uh, garage gym doing some prison yard workout, lifting, grunting, trying not to get too fat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that prison yard workout, that's nice to do by yourself. And not if you do an actual prison where after the workout, you got to watch some guy bust out. Or you, you know what I'm saying? You got to at least stand there and look excited while somebody jacks off so you don't get, you know, abused or sexually abused. Gang, bro, don't work. And you have to you pose the question of law enforcement if domestic violence is up. My girlfriend, she happens to be a police officer. And she said the number's up 25 to 35% in her jurisdiction. Pretty crazy stuff. I think people need to get out, get away from each other. She may kill me, too. I hope not. Dang. We both love the show. Keep up the great work. Be careful. Be safe. Gang, gang. Gang, bro. And thank you to your, for your, to your beautiful lady for her service. Uh, wow, dog. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to get out. Go dri- take a drive. Take a bike. Get a two-seater bike and cut the back off of that bitch and do a one-seater. You know, get in a wheelbarrow, dog, on a downhill. Go be by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Live. You got to take some time. Play hide and go seek. Have your wife go count and you drive out of town and get a motel somewhere. I mean, that's easy. You have to just, you know, it has to be... You know, you you, you got to separate from each other, especially if you have a weapon. If you have a weapon, bury the weapon. Give it to your friend. Barry. Give it to your friend Barry. The original Barry in the weapon. Don't fucking, don't, you know, you don't want to put a gun in the dirt, man. You want to, but, you know, have it somewhere else where you can't use it. If you want to shoot a spouse, you have to do, do a handgun, do, do, you know, make a little gun with your hand or draw a gun and throw it at him. You know, draw it on a, sh- a little sheet of some uh, legal pad. 
But thank you for calling, man. I like that. Getting a prison workout. Getting it done on your own. Um, you know, it's interesting. I find that I have to like, I'm wondering like who I am is really coming into question a lot with me during this virus. Who I am. You know, am I just, am I only a guy who just isn't going to, you know, how much am I willing to take care of myself? How much man is in me? You know, how much, you know, can I be a leader for myself? I mean, that's really, that's scary to admit sometimes. And sometimes when I'm in my depression, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I won't, that's when I don't want to be a leader for myself. You know, I wish somebody else had the controls and that they were, it's just, and it's such a lazy thing. Depression is also such a, there's a lazy edge to some of it. There's a, there's a self-pity edge to some of it, I find, for myself. I'm not talking about everybody. This is for me. But I, I was asking myself actually today, what kind of leader do I want to be? Even if I, you know, if I'm just, because the only person I'm really leading is me. You know, I don't have a family, you know, uh, yet. And I don't have an animal. You know, I have animals that I see sometimes, but that I don't have like a day-to-day animal. But, but I'm like, what kind of lead, what kind of leader am I to myself? You know, what kind of like leader am I to myself? What kind of leader? And then if within if I did have a family, but with my friends, with the people I work with and work uh, and that work in our in our team here, like what kind of leader am I? You know, and do I have what it like? How can I, you know, it just. You know, and 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 to feel empowered to say, I want, you know, I want to lead. I want to lead myself to be better. Because then sometimes it separates me from myself because sometimes I, I may not feel good. You know, I don't want to go for a run. I don't want, I did not want to go for a run. But then, but then sometimes I can be a lead. I can say, hey man, you can go for a run, you know. I'm, I'll, I'll be the leader of us. I'm not just going to let my feelings, because my feelings sometimes are me. And, but my choices are almost this other me. And, and and they and they my choices don't really have a lot of feelings sometimes they can just they can just do what's best for me so even if i don't feel like it i can go to my choices and say okay i know you don't feel good man but let me be a leader for you right now and let me maybe it just sounds like i have split personality disorder i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about but um but it's just been interesting because I feel like this is a time where a lot of us are, you know, by ourselves or a lot of us are, you know, things are more still in some ways. And so I'm sure a lot of people were wondering, well, who am I right now to my family? How how am I able to manage my own vibe and my own tribe and and, and keep things together? Um. And I just want to let you know that you can do it if you struggle and wonder if you can be a good leader for yourself and for others that you can. You can do it. You know, you can. And and uh, and even if you haven't been in the past, that's okay. Every day is a new opportunity. That's the beautiful thing about days, man. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that... That today doesn't remember yesterday, like the actual day? What if the sun rose and the first thing it did was say, Hey, motherfucker, remember what you did on Tuesday? But it doesn't do that, man. The sun just rises and says, Hey, man, I'm I'm here for you. You know? And I don't know. I don't remember anything. And you're like, damn, do you, have am- do you have amnesia, son? And the son is like, I don't know. I don't know if I do. I'm just going to be in the air for a little while, and then I'll be gone, man. But I'll see you tomorrow. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, 
what else? Let's get another caller came in that came in here. Uh, a call is 985-664-9503. Hey, Theo. This is Austin from Lynchburg, Virginia. What's up, Austin? And it's a real sugary gentleman over here calling there from Lynchburg. And Lynchburg, uh, Virginia, that's where they make that Lynchburg uh, lemonade, I think. Onward. I love your show, man. Uh, thank you for doing it for us. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thank you for calling and being a part of this world, gang. So, here's the deal. I've been in college for nine years, man. Oh, dang, bro. Amen. Boy, you might have got caught up on a little bit of that D-U-S-T, you feel me, son? And I've been there. I remember I bought a couple damn grams one time, first time ever, that I purchased some, a little bit of dust, you feel me? A little bit of that upper. And the man said, he said it was a performance enhancing drug, man. So I did a couple of straight bumps of that and fucking ran about eight miles over there near the railroad tracks over there near, uh, in, um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, over there off Perkins gang shit onward. Uh, three different schools, honestly. Uh, and I've been through some shit trying to graduate. Yes, 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 brother. But it sounds like you there now onward. Well, I'm finally graduating this May. Like, it's my year. And they canceled my graduation. Mm-hmm. And I had invited all my friends and family. Um, so, I guess my question is this. And, uh, and Mike Pompeo was scheduled to speak, but since it's canceled, can you do my commencement speech? I would love to hear what you have to say. You give me some guidance. Um, so if you could help me out, man, I'd appreciate it. Gang, gang. All right, bro. Let me think. So commencement. This is the final ceremony speech. I'll try it. All right, everyone. Good to be here today. And it's a beautiful day for everybody here. And I'm glad that everyone here showed up. Even though it took some of you guys nine years to graduate. That's absolutely unbelievable, but also awesome. Because imagine being in college. Now imagine staying in college for a lot longer than you did. Respect. Look, I'll tell you this, bro. The world is what it is, man. That thing's a shapeshifter. You know, when it's a dog, it's a dolphin, it's a dartboard. And... And so all you can control is you. And I know you're going to get out there and some of you guys are going to do drugs. Some of you guys are going to, you know, be gainfully employed. Some of you guys are going to probably, somebody in here is going to, statistically speaking, somebody in here is going to probably hit somebody with a vehicle and, and leave the scene and get away with it. Somebody in here will be a murderer. But no matter what you do, I think that I hope you feel some, I hope you put, I hope you find time in your life for other people. And I hope that you realize that life is, yeah, it's your life. But a lot of people care about it, not just you. And so with that in your mind and in your heart, I hope that you can, you know, treat your life as if it's something nice that somebody you care about lets you borrow. Um, because in a little bit of a way, that's, it's kind of what it is somewhat. You know, when people care about you, you have some responsibility. Um, uh, to care about yourself. And I believe in you guys, and I believe you guys can do it, dude. Go acorns or whatever the school spirit is, man. Gang shit, bro. Good luck out there, dog. And I love you, man. I'm glad you finally graduated. And um, And look, there's always opportunities for a party down the line. You can always do that later. Uh, what else? I think, I think we, 
you know, I think we came to a good end here. I think we could finish up right here. I, um, you know, I'm thinking about, dude, one thing, oh, I'll tell you this. I was thinking the other day when I was growing up, dude, a lot of, uh, a lot of times at school, we had this kid named Small Allen that went to our school and he was small, man. He was, I mean, you know, imagine somebody. Now just imagine him being just real small. And that was him, bro. And that was him, dude. You didn't... I mean, he, he was just so tiny, bro. So tiny. His little elbows were tiny. Sometimes he would use his elbows to do a... Uh, to knead a bread or something. He would have to do that to knead a dough. If you wanted to knead a dough, you had to, he had to use his elbows to get enough pressure on it. I mean, even some of them even a foot as well. He was so tiny, bro. Tiny, tiny. And he had a, he had a, he was a little, he a little nasty, bro. You know, he came from his daddy was nasty. And so he was also nasty. He was like nasty junior in his, in his DNA. And he would do this thing at school. He would go in the bathroom and turn the toilets. Uh, and they had some nice old school toilets in there. Not even ceramic, I think concrete or even pewter. Nice, something quality. And he would cut, he would turn the toilets, the plumbing off on them. And if kids had gone in the restroom and done number two, and this is a little vulgar and I'm sorry to tell it, but if they'd done a number two, you know, a duty, bro, a body duty. He would then go in, the toilets wouldn't flush. He, he had this big, he had like this kind of, I don't want to say fetish because we were children. But he had this kind of dirty desire to, he would go duty on top of it. You know what I'm saying? Like he, like he was the kind of person, you ever walk into a bathroom stall and if somebody's already done a number two in there, somebody did a strong number two or even a weak number two. And I'm like, oh man, I'll go to a different one. I don't even flush it. Some people use their foot to flush it. That's insane. Uh, I'm not flushing your duty with my foot, bro, like it's ancient Rome or something. But what he would do, what Small would do, is he would go get in the stall and then duty on top of someone else's duty. That's Like, I don't know how that, like, I don't know what the psyche behind that is. But just the level of, and I remember even when I'd come out of the restroom, he'd ask me if I flushed. You know, I'd be like, dang, dude, what? Get Leave me alone. You sick little bastard, bro. And then he'd fucking run up your leg or something. You know, he was just small. I mean, this guy was, he wouldn't run up your leg, but he could have if he start, if he got a good, you know, maybe a 40-foot start. And if you kind of put like a, if you, you know, put a wedge or something at the edge of your, at the intersection of the ground in your legs like a curve or something a little bit of a i don't know what that's called but um but that, yeah that's crazy dude just to to think that and just but i'm saying we're all different people man you know some people just go urinate in the bathroom and do that and some people go in the bathroom and they see that someone else is already number two to toilet and they go and Make it a four, bro. And that's that's the dark arts, brother. If you wonder what the dark arts are, then stop wondering. If if you have a piece of paper and somebody gave you a test and it says, "What are the dark arts?" That's that's it, man. That's it. Uh let's take this call. We'll do one more, man, gang. Hey, Theo. I uh, got a job today. I got hired. Gang, baby. You heard that? It's tough times right now. It's tough times right now. People losing their job and getting furloughed and unloaded. And we got a man right here. A caller saying he got an opportunity, brother. Gang, man. Um, it's like a town that was 50 miles over. And I'm not driving lately, so I biked about 60 miles. Okay. That 60-mile biker, dude, you showing up. Gang shit, baby. 
just for the sign holding job, and he hired me. He said he wants me to come help in the tire shop too. So it's turning into like a job job. I know a lot of people are struggling right now, and <clears throat> I just wanted to tell someone the good news. And I'm dehydrated as hell. I'm in the south, and I just bike far. And but um, it's a pretty pretty decent neighborhood, and we'll see what happens. It's not really my experience in the tire shop I'm more, more into doing like construction and skill trades and stuff but oh yeah wall skills and everything piping onward hey i'll take what i can get right now and so i hope you're doing doing good All right oh man that's awesome that's awesome man and i'm gonna be happy for your opportunity that's what i'm gonna do you know, uh, thank you for sharing that with us, man. And I wish you the best of luck with that new job. You get in there, dog. And you be the best sign, tire guy. You do whatever. You do whatever you got to do, man. Um, You know, we all have, we, have, we have a lot of blessings. I know a lot of people out there are struggling. And, uh, and I know a lot of people are worried about where their next work is going to come from and their next check. And, uh... And, um, and I know that, you know, at times when we are poor in our fiscal outlook, that it's really hard not to let that affect how we look at ourselves or the energy or the love or the compassion and stuff that we, you know, how rich we are inside of ourselves, you know. Um, but, you know, I just, you know, I, I just, you know, I hope that everyone just does what they can to keep the, keep the wealth up in their attitude and in their compassion and in their grace for others, um, You know, because that's something that we can control. And I know it's hard, and I'm not saying that I know anybody's plight or I know I know what people's struggles are like. Uh, but I do know that on days when I've had money in my bank and days when I've had none, uh, that I'd trade both of those away to be, to have had a full spirit, you know, and really to just have had, you know, to, man, when you, when your heart is full and you're recognizing the things around you that are, that are keeping you up, um, man, there's, it don't matter. I'm not looking at my bank statement then. You know, um, so I, I don't know what I'm saying. I'll just, I just hope everybody finds as much gratitude as they can right now. And, and even if the war, even if, uh, the, the society that we live in and, and, and our financial levels aren't exactly what we want and we don't know what our outlook is, uh, we don't know that, that we keep the levels that we can control as high as we can, you know, and I think we do that by, thinking of others by caring about others and by trying to stay trying to stay in, in some gratitude and I'm not telling anybody what to do I'm, I'm telling myself what to do as well um, you know I want to be a good leader I want to be a good leader for myself uh, and I think I can and I think there's a lot of bright I think there's a lot of bright stuff on the horizon and I you know I, um, and I love you you know whoever you are and a lot of people do and a lot of people have. And you, whatever, if, if you're struggling with something, man, you'll get through it. You know. Uh, thank you. There's a lot, a lot of amazing people calling on this show and making this show awesome, man. People calling from around the world. Thank you. You know, I'm so... Uh, you know, I'm so fortunate to be able to be part of a, a nice group like this. You know, when I think about even just all the places I went, the different cities and just around the freaking world, man, and people came out and uh and just showed me love, man. That shit was 
Um, you know, and I got so rattled over the past year. It's been hard. It's just been so hard for me to connect with myself or to just even know what was going on. Um, but you know, I'm happy today to, uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here and have memories of people that care about me. And a lot of those people are a lot of people that listen to this and, and some in really close ways in my life and others in, in, in not as close ways, but still, uh, very important. And, uh, and yeah, let's see what we can do, huh? And let's see what we can do together. Amen, bro. Gang shit. Um, sorry about the profanity. Sometimes it happens, you know, it's that kind of night. And you know what? I'll be honest with you, bro. I'm about to go get me a dang cheeseburger, dog. From McDaniels, dog. I'm about to get... T- oh, and here's what you don't know about McDaniels is if you go in there, tell them you want a double hamburger. And they have it behind the counter. They have them. They don't have them on the sign. You won't see a picture of them. Maybe you'll see somebody secretly did a drawing or something. That's the best you could get. But you order that double HB from your boy freaking Ronnie McDent. And they going to serve that sucker to you, son. So that's a little treat for you. Um, I hope whatever you're doing that you're finding the energy to make it as fun as possible for you and for the loved ones around you. Uh, you know, um... I don't know. I guess I just know a lot of people are struggling. I know a lot of people are worried and a lot of people and uh and um and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just wish there was more that I could do to help. And I know a lot of people feel that way. Um so just know whoever you are that people care about you. Just know that. And that they always have too, I bet. Or, or I hope. Uh, you guys be good to yourselves. We're going to leave out today on this is a song by this man, Evan Bartels. And, you know, he uh, he made a song years ago, uh, The Devil, God, and Me, which I love so much, man. And he, I believe, is out in Nebraska. He lives in Nashville now. And, um, man, his album... He has this EP, Promised Land, that if you want to support something, that's something to go support. And we'll put the link right below. You can go buy it. And It's five songs, and this is one that I just absolutely love. Um, it is called A Thousand Times. You guys be good to yourselves, man. And I'm going to try to do the same, and we deserve it, gang. I'm going to sit here and listen to this one with you. Oh, yeah. Promised Land by Evan Bartels. A thousand times, it's called. I could see the rain coming. From a hundred miles away Baptizing empty skylines With the hope of better days And I tell myself This will all be fine Then I watch you from a window I built inside my mind I wonder Every time I feel the thunder, I remember I'm just a child. I would die a thousand times before I ever let you down. Man, it's powerful, dog. Teeth for 
thousand times Before I ever let you down